this since lockdown started. So uh, great to be back. Uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, the outlook for preferred securities. And uh, but first, I'm going to really uh, rewind a little bit and uh, tell you about what happened in this uh, difficult period, I think, for all of us. Uh, and financial markets were uh, quite uh, difficult to navigate. Uh, first, we had the uh, lockdown. Uh, as a result, um, the central banks uh, globally, as well as uh, fiscal um, stimulus appeared, and uh, there was a lot of monetary and uh, fiscal support. Uh, but now, um, what happened in 2022 was quite unprecedented. Uh, because um, Fed uh, really overstayed their welcome and uh, they felt uh, behind the curve in uh, withdrawing, withdrawing the monetary uh, stimulus um, and not uh, stopping the uh, quantitative easing. Um, so as a result, they had to catch up um, and they had to raise uh, short-term uh, rates by more than uh, 4%. As you can see in this chart, uh, that resulted in the whole curve shifting up uh, and uh, in unprecedented move, uh, definitely the first time uh, in my career, I've seen 10-year uh, rates increase by uh, more than 250 base points and 30 rates uh, by, uh, by um, a similar amount, around 200. Uh, really, uh, we have not experienced uh, anything like that um, in probably since the 70s. Uh, and I think this is what really drove the performance of all of the asset classes uh, globally, uh, because uh, U.S. and the Federal Reserve is still, U.S. is still the largest economy, and clearly Federal Reserve is the most powerful uh, uh, central bank uh, out there. Uh, so everything from uh, equity market, uh, currencies, uh, commodities, everything is really key off of the uh, federal funds rate. Uh, the, obviously that happened already. Uh, the good thing is I was not presenting this outlook last year because the uh, yields on preferred securities as well as uh, most of this uh, fixed income was really depressed based on that uh, fund, uh, Fed fund rate. Uh, now what happened uh, as a result of this move, uh, for the first time since 2009, uh, the real rate it, are finally positive. And they're not only positive, but they're really positive from the second, uh, from um, two years on, uh, so two year, five year, and 10, and 30, and so on and so forth. So that hasn't happened uh, since 2009, since uh, global financial crisis. Why is it important? Uh, well, finally, after all these years, fixed income investors are getting paid to take interest rate uh, risk or taking duration risk. So you have a positive return when you're giving money to someone, which is, uh, as, a, as a portfolio manager, as a fixed income portfolio manager, this is a great time to be in fixed income. And I'm not talking, just talking about, uh, you know, my uh, the portfolios that I manage, but it's really investment grade fixed income, high yield, you'll have John talking about how high yield layer, any type of uh, uh, fixed income is really, really attractive. And again, uh, that hasn't happened in a long uh, time. Uh, you would probably ask me, well, what's going on uh, with Fed funds rate and inflation? And by the way, when I say real rates, is really I'm talking about uh, the difference between uh, nominal rates and uh, investors' expectations of what's going to happen in inflation in two, five, and uh, uh, so, on for, so, on, so, so on and so forth years. Uh, the uh, short-term rate is still negative from a uh, real rate perspective. So uh, what, what we're going to be experiencing, and I think a lot of people are talking about, is whether Fed is going to continue raising rates uh, to go above the inflation, short-term inflation, uh, inflation uh, uh, or uh, the inflation is going to come down uh, by itself. It still remains to be seen uh, what is going to happen, but uh, in principle, in an environment like this, you already want to take uh, duration risk. 
Uh, therefore, for instance, in our portfolios, we prefer taking duration risk uh, relative to uh, credit risk or spread duration risk. So uh, it's really good time uh, to take uh, duration risk. Uh, I also would well, I'd like to point out that uh, these real uh, positive rates don't stay for too long. Uh, and why is that? It is uh, as these rates go through the economy and the economy slows down, clearly uh, this real rate is not sustainable in a highly levered economy. So as a result, you're going to expect uh, these real rates actually come down. And we actually have seen that uh, uh, in the beginning of this year already where the long end of the curve started coming down relative to uh, the short term uh, race, uh, which is uh, now uh, the whole curve is, is uh, inverted. Uh, next page, I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the value, the valuation of preferreds. And um, uh, look, uh, they look I think that they look fairly valued uh, at the spread levels where they are. We usually, when we talk about valuations, we really talk about spread of, uh, of our securities relative to treasuries or relative to investment grade credit uh, because uh, these securities are issued by investment grade uh, companies um, which are really concentrated in the financial um, uh, sector. Which brings me to this uh, big spike here in 2009, since all of these securities come from uh, financial sector, clearly they didn't perform really well in 2009. Uh, and that is really an outlier along, uh, together with probably 2011 to 2012, where that financial um, uh, crisis was also uh, present in uh, Europe. And then you can see the last uh, spike is uh, COVID. So uh, only three times on this loop.